Hello and welcome to the Stop Trust Maths video on Pythagoras Theorem. Now what Pythagoras Theorem is, is it's just a rule that relates the three sides of a right angle triangle. Now it has to be a right angle triangle. Now we call this longest length of the right angle triangle the hypotenuse. Notice the slightly difficult spelling. The hypotenuse is just the longest side of a right angle triangle. And notice that that side is opposite the right angles. Now let's say what these side lengths actually are. Let's say that this was A and this length was B and that the hypotenuse, the longest length, is C. Now what Pythagoras theorem says is that if I was to turn each of these into a square, so we've got a square here, each of the sides, turn this side into a square, so I know it looks a bit like a rectangle, but let's assume that's a square. And let's turn this side into a square as well. Now let's consider the areas of these three squares around the triangle. Well, that side length is A, and because it's a square, that would be A as well. So the area of the square is A times A, that would be A squared. Similarly, this area would be B squared, because it's B times B. And this area here, C times C, that would be C squared. And what Pythagoras theorem says is that if you do this area and add this area, you get this area. Now, I'm not going to go through the proof of how this works exactly, but we're just going to use it to solve a bunch of questions. So basically, if you have one of the shorter lengths squared and you add the other shorter length squared, that gives you the hypotenuse length squared. So this is best illustrated with a few examples. We've got a triangle like this with sides 3, 4 and x and we want to find the side length x. Now the first thing always is to identify where the hypotenuse is. So this is the longest length, it's opposite the right angle, so that's the hypotenuse. And notice in this formula here, the hypotenuse, the c, goes on its own on one side of the equation. So let's kind of replicate this. We can make this the A and this the B. It doesn't matter which way around. As long as these are the two shorter sides, it doesn't matter which way they go around. So let's just do this length squared. So the A squared plus the B squared equals the hypotenuse squared. And now what we need to do is to gradually simplify this equation to work out what X is. So what's 3 squared? Well, it's 9. What's 4 squared? Well, it's 16. And then what's 9 plus 16? It's 25. And now we've got something squared is 25. So what do we do to both sides to get rid of that squared? Well, we just square root both sides, and that gives us x is equal to 5. So in this case, this length is 5. So we've got 3, 4, and 5. And just as a sort of extra fact, um, when, whenever you're able to find whole number lengths for the three sides, because they're not always whole numbers, they might be decimals, um, that's known as a Pythagorean triple. And there's many different Pythagorean triples. Now let's do the second one y to 10. Again, we need to identify where the hypotenuse is. So look, this is the longest side, and if it, it's hard to tell what the longest side is. Just notice it's opposite the right angle, so it's this one here. So we just do these two shorter sides, each squared, and add them together. So we could have that one first, y squared plus 2 squared. So the a squared plus the b squared, and again, doesn't matter which way around they go equals the hypotenuse squared. So the hypotenuse always goes on its own on one side of the equation. So let's just simplify this again. y squared plus, well, four, 2 squared is 4. 10 squared is 100. And then, well, we've added 4 to get 100. Let's minus 4 from each side of the equation. So we get y squared now, because that's got rid of the plus 4. 100 minus 4 is 96. Now, what squared is 96? We have to square root both sides. Now, I'm going to need a calculator this time because 96 is not a square number. So, square root 96, it's 4 root 6, or as a decimal to three significant figures, it's 9.80 to 3. S, F. So we can see in this particular case, although these were whole numbers, Y wasn't a whole number. So that's often the case. Um, what about 3? So we've got a length P here. We've got 12 centimetres. And we've got 13 centimetres. So again, let's identify the hypotenuse. Well, this is opposite the right angle. It's the longest length, so that's going to go on its own. So we do the two shorter sides, each squared and added together. So P squared plus 12 squared 
equals 13 squared. We don't need to write the units in our actual calculation. And then let's simplify p squared plus 144 equals 13 squared is 169. Subtract 144 from each side. That gives us 25. Square root both sides to get rid of that squared. And we get p is 5. And now I do want to put the unit in, so it's 5 centimetres. So this is another Pythagorean triple because 5, 12, 13, we've got three whole numbers there, but you don't need to know that. Now, the more interesting one is we've actually got two right-angled triangles uh, put together. Now, we want to find x. The tr problem is, is that we only know one side length on this triangle, but we know two here, so we could use this triangle to initially find that length. And once we've found this length, we can combine it with this length to find that one. So... Use a triangle where you've got the most information first, which is this one, because we've got two lengths. So let's give this a name. We can just call it uh, Y. Yep. So we're going to work out Y first. So let's just use this triangle here. We can do the two shorter sides each squared. So Y squared plus 4 squared is 7 squared. So Y squared plus 16 is 49 y squared is equal to 33 and so y is the square root of 33. Now you might think we put this in a calculator to work out what this is as a decimal but actually because we're about to square this we should leave it as it is for the moment. So let's concentrate on this triangle now and I'm running out of space never mind. Um, so we've got the two shorter lengths each squared so x squared plus y squared. Now notice this is root 33 and we're going to square it. Now what's root 33 squared? Well it's 33 because the squared gets rid of the square root. So we've got x squared plus root 33 squared which is just 33 equals 6 squared which is 36. Then if we subtract the 33 from each side we've got x squared is 3 and that means x is the square root of 3. Now it might be that we're allowed to leave our answer like this. So if the question asks for an exact answer, then we should leave it as a square root. But if it asks for a decimal or something to three significant figures, so the square root of 3, then we should do that. So it's 1.73. And that is the answer to that one. Now this one is quite a bit harder. I've based this off a GCC question I once saw, but just changed the lengths. So we've got this trapezium shape here, because it has one pair of parallel sides. And we've got these lengths of 6, 11, 13. And we've got these two points A and B. And we need to find the length of AB, so this length here. Now, you can see, possibly, that we've got this right angle triangle here. So oh, we can use Pythagoras. However, we don't know that bottom length. We've got this length, and we want to find this length, but we don't have that length. So we're going to somehow have to use these numbers to work out this length. Now the trick with this one is, can you see that if I add this line here, then this triangle here is a right angle triangle. Now we know this length here, the 13, uh, and we want to work out this length, because that length is going to be the same as that length, isn't it? Can you see that they're the same length? So we need to know this length. Now we can do that with very simple subtraction, because we know that length is 11, but that length is 6. Now that's 11 and that's 6, it must be that this length is 5. So then we can use Pythagoras on this triangle. So if I call this length here x, now there's a quick direct way of working out um, the lengths in a right angle triangle. If, for example, if I just write this here, if I had, say, a length here of um, 2 and this length of 3 and I want to find this length here, then the quick way to do it is that x will be the square root of the sum of the squares of those sides. So that's a sort of quick way of doing Pythagoras without having to do all the steps that we did before. And that happens if you're trying to find the hypotenuse. But if you're trying to find one of the shorter lengths, so let's just say that this was 3, that was 2, and one of the shorter sides was x, then the quick way of doing it is you do x as a square root of, and you subtract the squares instead. Yep. So we do this. So this is the quick way if you're trying to find the hypotenuse, you do the square root of the sum of the squares, and if you're trying to find uh, a shorter side, one of the two shorter sides, it's the square root of the difference of the squares. So I'm going to do that here. So that means x, which is one of the shorter sides, x is the square root 
of 13 squared minus 5 squared, so the difference of squares. Um, and if you put that in your calculator, you'll find that is 12. So we now know that's 12, which means this is also 12. And now look, we've got a right angle triangle now with the 11 here, the 12 here. So we know that AB is going to be... Now, notice this time we're trying to find the hypotenuse of this triangle. So the quick way is to do the square root of the sum of squares, so 11 squared plus 12 squared. And I'll put that into my calculator. Square root of 265. And if you wanted that as a decimal, it's 16.3 three significant figures. Now, the very last question involves forming a quadratic equation. Now, if you haven't done that kind of algebra before, if you haven't done quadratic equations, I recommend you stop the video here. But let's try this. Now, this is interesting because we don't actually know as a sort of number what any of the sides are. They're all algebraic. But we can still use Pythagoras because we've got expressions for all three of these lengths. So we can just do what we usually do. Well, the two shorter sides are here. So we do that squared plus the other shorter length squared is equal to the hypotenuse squared. Now, this is an equation which we can just solve to find x. Let's try and expand these brackets first. If I write out the brackets twice, this is not x squared plus 1 squared, by the way. We have to write out the bracket twice, or you might be able to expand it in your head. Equals x plus 2 times x plus 2. Sorry, running out of space. So let's expand this out. We're going to do each thing in this bracket times each thing in this bracket. So we've got x squared. We've got x times 1, which is x. We've got 1 times x, which is x again. We've got 1 times 1, which is 1. And then here we've got x times x, which is x squared. x times 2, which is 2x. We've got another 2x. And we've got 2 times 2, which is 4. Let's just tidy that up a bit. So we've got, collect like terms, 2x squared here. We've got two lots of x. And we've got a 1. And then we've got an x squared, we've got 4x there, 2x plus 2x, and we've got 4. Now, with quadratic equations, we like to have 0 on one side, and we want to put everything on the side where x squared is positive. So there's more x squared over this side than that side, so let's get everything over here. So we're going to subtract x squared, so if we do that, 2x squared minus the x squared is x squared. We're going to subtract the 4x, 2x minus 4x is minus 2x. And then we want to subtract that 4, so 1 minus 4 is minus 3. And then do you remember with quadratic equations, if you've studied them, is you have to factorise them. So we need two numbers which add to give that number there minus 2 and times to give that number the minus 3. Well, what two numbers add to give minus 2 and times to give minus 3? Well, it's minus 3 and plus 1. So do you remember that we factorise it like this, x minus 3, x plus 1. And then because we've got a product of two things equals zero, well, if two things times give zero, one of them has to be zero. So if the x minus three is zero, what minus three is zero? Well, x is three. And what plus one is zero? Well, it would be minus one. Now, only one of these is a valid solution. And this often happens when you have a quadratic equation, you get two solutions. So let's look practically what can be the right solution. Well, can you have a length x of minus one? No, you can't. So I'm going to put a stripe through it. And that means that x must be 3.